distance time graphs. Another way to look at motion is to make a graph plotting the distance traveled against time elapsed. This is a powerful analytic tool that we will be applying to some labs in this unit, and of course, labs further on in the course. By convention, elapsed time is plotted on the x-axis when graphing motion. The other variable, in this case, travel distance, is plotted on the y-axis. Example, a lab cart moves on a horizontal tabletop. The travel distance and the time are measured by motion sensors. First, we'll make a table from our observations. This table shows nine measurements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The two variables are distance traveled and elapsed time. And notice how we put the units in the titles of these columns. This way you don't have to repeat them all throughout. We're going to create a scatter plot by plotting the points. Each data row of the table, and remember we had nine rows, equates to a point on the graph. Here's the points. Very important, points are not connected in a scatter plot. This is how a scatter plot differs from a line graph. However, we will use a line of best fit or trend line that can help us predict outcomes using the data that you already have. It is drawn on the scatter plot that best fits the data points. It also tends to smooth out the measurement errors that were part of, part of any lab, frankly. There are quantitative approaches to drawing a line of best fit, but a simpler approach will get a good approximation. First, place a ruler or a straight edge on the plot and move it until the edge lines up with the points. Usually about half the points are above the edge and half are below. Then draw the line along that edge. The line does not need to pass through any of the data points to be correct. It often won't pass through any data points. Now we can complete the graph. And here's our line of best fit. And let's go ahead and count the data points. One above, two above, three above, one, two, three below. And hey, actually, two are actually on the line, but they don't have to be. The line of best fit helps correlate the data, making it possible to make predictions about times and distances that were not included in the data. For any given elapsed time, the distance traveled in that time can be predicted from the line of best fit. And here's the key statement. The line replaces the data points in describing the motion. Once you have the best fit line, you don't look at the points anymore. Using the line of best fit, we can predict that at 9 seconds, the cart would have traveled 17.6 meters as seen by the dashed green lines. This prediction is made even though no data were collected at 9 seconds. Slope on a graphed line is defined as the amount by which the y value changes with respect to a change in the x value. More precisely, slope, and we use the lowercase m to represent slope, equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or delta y over delta x. Since the y-axis is the vertical axis and the x-axis is a horizontal axis, the slope is sometimes referred to as rise over run. This is a shorthand way of saying delta y over delta x. It's often useful to find the slope of a line in order to analyze the correlation between variables. Slope shows the rate of change of the variable on the y-axis with respect to the variable on the x-axis. Sometimes, the slope of the line will identify a derived quantity. For instance, suppose we make a distance versus time graph, distance on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. Whenever you have this, the first guy is typically the y-axis and the second quantity will be the x-axis. Let's examine the meaning of its slope. This graph shows the distance versus time for an object. The slope of the line shows the following m, which is slope, delta y over delta x, rise over run, and then finally distance over time. But what is distance over time? That's speed. So speed is the slope of the best fit line on a distance versus time graph. An object traveling at a higher speed will have a greater slope on a distance versus time graph of its motion, something like that. A smaller slope would represent an object with a lower speed. And finally, an object at rest would have zero slope. That would be a horizontal line on a distance versus time graph.
Students will sometimes erroneously count the boxes on the graph instead of using the scale on each axis for calculating the slope. Suppose a student were to calculate the slope of the best fit line to the right using the two identified points on the graph. The student counts five boxes up, one, two, three, four, five, and then four boxes to the right, one, two, three, four, for this point here. The student then might incorrectly calculate the slope as five meters minus zero meters, four seconds minus zero seconds, and get 1.25 meters per second. Okay, so obviously that's wrong because we said incorrectly. So let's look what the student should have done. The student should look at the scale and identify the coordinates 0, 0 right here. And then the other one is 4. This is a 4. And this is a 10. 4, 10. And then correctly calculate the slope as 10 minus 0, change in y, over change in x, and get 2.5 meters per second. 